What does it mean? That means on the x-axis of my laptop screen, I have 1024 pixels. On the y-axis, I have 8,000 water pixels. So the number is only pixels. That is almost about a million pixels on that screen. For each pixel, there is a value. When the, that is a value is value of the color. How is color measured? Anybody can tell me here? What could be the metric of color measurement? With three colors, I can generate all the colors which you see in the world. RGB. Hmm? Yes, there are somebody who is talking about Red, green and blue. By proper mixing of red, green and blue, I can generate all the colors of the world, all the colors, all the shades, etc. In the printing technology, we don't use RGB, we use what is known as CMYK. C stands for cyan, M stands for magenta, Y stands for yellow, and K stands for black. Offset printing technology uses four inks, four color inks, and by mixing of these four color inks, you get the entire color printing. So the pixel value that we have is essentially the color value. What is the color value? The color value is that I take the value from 0 to 255. There are 256 color values for each color. Red will have 0 to 256. 0 means red is not there. 256 means red is there completely. 255. Similarly for 2, and for green, RGB. So if I say that red is 0, green is 0, and uh, blue is 0, that means there is no color there. When there is no color, you can say it is white. If red is 255, green is 255, and blue is 255, that combination of value will give you black. So in between, you can have 256 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 256 colors. Depending upon the value, some will be green, some will be yellow, some will be dark red, all the colors of the world. So what happens in the, in the digital camera which I have on my phone, when you take a picture, depending upon the light it falls on, it stores the value of the colors in these three bits are the that is a very difficult digital camera. I convert what I see as a color. And you have to be careful here because colors can have many shades. You know? Even in a color of red, see, you will find many shades. But each shade is generated by a particular value of R. So same color many shades you can get. So this value is stored as a data file. This is RGB value. So when I have a program like Microsoft Paint or something equivalent, if I subtract this digital file, it can recreate on the computer screen that image. That is how the image is recreated. Yeah. So let me start from here. This is what I was telling you about the camera. The camera is like this. A person standing there, you have the camera and you have the film, and this is how the person will be taken back. The thing is, this dimension from here, and compared to this level dimension, is different upon this distance as well as the focal length of the lens. The same principle applies in the digital camera. And no difference. But instead of the film here, I now put a very charge sensitive, charge coupled device, CCE. That's what I do. So that it records digitally what is the RT value of the So remote sensing is, I make an inference about objects on the earth from kilometers away from my satellite. The way I take your picture from my digital camera, if I can take a picture of some place on the earth from a satellite, the same phenomenon, then it is called satellite remote sensing. 
Why do we need to take pictures from the factory? Why can't we just take pictures from top of a building or somewhere if I want to get some information? Once from the satellite, I can get a larger area taken picture at the same time. To give an example, if I stand on the road and take a picture, I get only one portion of the road. If I climb up the National College building and take a picture, I get a slightly longer length of the road. If I climb even further from my aircraft, I can see maybe the whole of Vasubhanguri. Isn't it? From that, it is called synoptic view. And if I go kilometers away, I can see the whole of the country. So if I want a quick, say for example, if today somebody says, where all it has rain and where all it has not rain, it will be possible for me to take the whole picture of the country and tell this much is a place which has got water, this is a place which does not have water. So that is one advantage of remote sensing. But what you need for any kind of sensing, what you need for any kind of sensing is that it has to reflect something. When I take a picture, what does it reflect? If it reflects visible light. What it reflects is that you know light consists of seven colors. Newton's the disc you would have done in your high school. And you rotate the disc very fast. What color do you see? Why? Have anybody actually did an experiment here? Your dad. It, it was a disc already there in the school, bought and kept. Have you ever tried to make one disc and rotate? You are trying. You have got a color? Not, not nearly like polish it. Okay, good. It is very, very tricky. The proportions of those colors have to be exact to get white color. If you try it by yourself, you will get gray, as he said, dull white, you will get all kinds of things. I have seen some students eating up getting back also. <laughs> okay. So you have to be careful in the proportion. So what happens is that this light is there. This light since science on my face, this light is not sunlight. It does not have all the colors of the sunlight. That's why, you know, I don't know how many of you go to silk sari shop and buy silk sari. But if you see the older people buying silk sari, they want to look for the weight. Second, they will not see it in that shop's lights. They will take outside the shop in the daytime and see the colors. So the shop light can distort the color because what is reflected is based on what is incident upon. If I have only very lights, I get one kind of color. If I have this kind of light, I get another kind of color. And if I have sodium vapor lamp, I get another kind of color. So what is reflected is dependent upon what is falling on the top. So in remote sensing, I can do two kinds of remote sensing. One kind of remote sensing is I can broadcast some specific frequency and then find out what is reflected. Or I can use the sunlight. I can take picture from a satellite when that area is illuminated by sun. So when I do that, I am not spending energy on sending any wavelength or any frequency to the top I am not sending any radiation. I am just taking, I am making use of the enormous energy of sun and I am going to use the sun's electromagnetic spectrum and then I am going to say, using that I am taking a picture. It is like taking your photograph of the sun. So what is the sunlight? Sunlight is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Is it class one physics? Electromagnetic spectrum starts from gamma rays. Okay, at one picometer. Then goes to the the X-rays, which is nanometer wavelength. Then it goes to ultraviolet, which is also cannot be seen, but some space have ultraviolet. And then it goes to visible spectrum, which is what I have put here. The visible spectrum goes from 400 micrometer to 500 micrometer. And these are the colors in the visible spectrum. After the visible spectrum, I have infrared, I have radio microwave, wave, short wave, and long wave. Nowadays, very few people use any radio. What all they use? They use frequency modulation. Amplitude modulation radio, I think, is virtually non existent. And 
when you used to have amplitude modulating radios, we used to have short wave radio broadcasting and medium wave radio broadcasting. Like band Akash was 550 meters. That 550 meters was a wave length which used to come from band of Akash BBC used to broadcast a number of things starting from 12 to 21, 41, 61. They are short, short wavelengths. So that is the radio wave which I am talking about. Short wave, radio short wave and radio long wave. Radio long wave can go up to kilometers also. So this is the entire electromagnetic spectrum which is available. Out of which the visible spectrum is only this much portion. See, only this much is visible spectrum. And but that is what we all see. For any kind of, for us to see, for us to live, that is the spectrum which is in excessive use. All the time we use that. So I am just enlarging that and then I am showing in the visible spectrum these are the different colors and you can see the shades also at these kind of nanometers. To give you an example of the wavelength and what is the size of it, at this end, gamma rays, the size of the wavelength is equivalent to atomic nucleus, but when it comes to <coughs> visible, that is microns, they have the size of a bacteria or a micro. But when they go to long wave radio, etc., wavelength is equivalent to a human or a skycraft or even a mountain. The wavelength would be even going to kilometers. So you have a very small, invisible, almost nucleus like wavelength to almost Mount Everest kind of wavelength. So if you see the energy level, at the, at the gamma rate you have a short wavelength, very high frequency and high energy. Gamma rays are very high energy. On the other hand, long radio wave or long wavelength, low frequency and low energy. The energy is almost proportional to that, the frequency of the, that's why your FM radio requires high energy transmitter, high power transmitter because they are in gigahertz. Whereas the normal medium wave radio requires a low energy transmitter. So what happens when the sunlight falls on the world? Some amount of light is absorbed in the atmosphere and what happens is some is scattered by atmosphere. Some are absorbed by water, some are emitted by surface radiation and some are reflected solar radiation. This is what happens when the sunlight falls, not all the light is reflected back. Depending upon the object on the earth, some are absorbed, some are reflected, some are scattered. So by knowing what reflects how much, I can virtually understand what is there below. So this is the reflection. This is what is your pain mirror. You know, you study the law of reflection and people will say that you keep a mirror and keep some pins here and you can see the pins and draw the tails and angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. You must have done that experiment and done some exams also on that. That is what we we'll call it ideal specular reflection. But not all reflectors are like that. Only mirror is there. All of us reflect. This chair reflects, this floor reflects. Everything reflects something. But they will not be ideal reflectors like a mirror. So you somehow like this, near perfect reflector. That is a major portion it will reflect in that direction, but there will be other reflections, small, small to other directions. Like that you get ideal diffuse reflector. Ideal diffuse reflector is the one where the incidence ray is reflected in all directions. Okay. It, so that whatever it, the energy is also distributed in all directions. So what happens is that if I have this kind of a reflector, this is very good for me, for a picture. My camera will be best if I have this kind of reflection. My camera will be useless if I have this kind of reflection. But the amount of energy that falls on my camera will be very good. 
But the world is made of all kinds of objects. So you will not be able to say that all objects should be like this, some objects should be like this also. Which is also an information for us. So what happens is that if I take an object and I am saying that these are my wavelengths which will fall on the object, first is I said atmosphere scatters some energy back. It doesn't allow all the energy back into the atmosphere. That is a scattering of energy from the atmosphere. How much energy is transmitted to the atmosphere and how much energy is not transmitted, refracted completely back in this graph. So you will find that in this way you get most of the energy transmitted except for a small band here. And but here it is all refracted back. So there is a, in near infrared and before the far wave infrared, there is some band in which nothing enters here. The atmosphere reflects completely back. And then you have this, you know, in the short wave uh, infrared in these frequencies, there is a lot of absorption in the atmosphere. Gradually increase. So what happens is, it is important for us to know that what frequency gives us better reflectance to build our cameras sensitive for those frequencies. What I am saying is that I want to build a camera. So I want to build this pixel which is task of the device. But I need to know that which one I should build. If I have this information saying from this frequency to this frequency, the atmosphere doesn't interfere with you, then the camera which takes picture in this frequency will get most of the information. So that kind of a camera I will put. So these are the various kinds of cameras which we put on our satellite system. IRS is for Indian remote sensing satellite. List 3 is, it is called linear imaging spectral system. It's a kind of a camera. List 3 is one such camera. Pan is a pan chromatic camera where my charge coupled device will convert everything into shades of grey. It will only show 0 to 63 values. They are all grey values. So any color is converted into a gray. I don't know how many of you use uh, HP digital printer in your computer. There is a setting saying that print in gray, gray scale. I don't know how many of you use that, print in gray scale. Print in gray scale basically means it will convert every color. I said color has three values, RGB. If I convert all those three values into 64 values of gray. Saying that from this to this is this value of gray, this to this. That is what pan chromatographic camera does. That is what I have pan. It takes only gray scale pictures. And it will picture in this spectrum. I have this three does this and this. And near infrared also it does and some software infrared. This is ocean satellite monitor. I have people. We want to measure what happens on the ocean and you will see ocean we want van way infrared, short wave infrared, all that to be pictures. So that camera has the ability to get the reflectance back. Spot is a French satellite system. It's a French government satellite system and that has these kind of chemicals. Why it is important for me is if I want to study the avalanches of Himalayas, I know that with what frequencies they will reflect most. Then I will choose a camera which can collect that frequency and convert it into data. If I want to study ocean, I will use choose some other camera. If I want to study urban areas in the city, I will use some other camera. Or a combination of cameras. I'll show you later how I can combine images and clarity will enhance. So this is how remote sensing is done and choose a camera in which reflectance from the object of study is the highest. So this is some reflectance curve. What reflects at what frequency to how much percentage? So you take uh, water, it doesn't reflect anything at all. Water absorbs everything. So from the sky, if I take a picture of water, I will get back. Water absorbs everything. 
water does not reflect anything, any frequency. So water is in horizontal line. Then I have, see this is the line which is for the healthy vegetation. So at various frequencies, healthy vegetation reflects something, absorbs something. From frequency which is near infrared to short wave infrared, it reflects quite a bit. So I have similar for paranoid, which is a kind of a clay, for iron oxide, for dry vegetation. This is called signature. The way a person has a signature, which is what banks use to pass your check or not give you money. And now we have started using fingerprint and iris in my Aadhaar and uh, various biometric. Everybody is supposed to have a unique fingerprint, unique iris scan. And everybody is supposed to have a unique fingerprint. That way they say that somebody else signs your signature is called forgery. And nobody can do a good forgery. Similarly, every object has its own signature. The signature is based on what it absorbs in the sunlight and what it reflects in the sun. Which frequency it retains and which frequency it. Retains. So by Taking a picture in my camera and identifying which frequency I have received back in my camera, I can tell below the ground at that corresponding pixel level what is it likely to be. Is it vegetation or is it sand or is it water or is it road? In fact, I can go to the extent of saying that what vegetation it could be. Is it wheat or rice or Ragi or something, where each one of the plant has its own specific signature. There could be some signature confusion. Say for example, water hyacinth and teak has roughly the same signature. But they are very rare. Signature confusion is there, but it is rare. So this kind of a graph is the signature of each one of the object, and people have now developed signatures for many, many of them. This is the actual signature of a healthy vegetation, you know, leaf where does it reflect, you know, the micrometer, and where the chlorophyll absorption takes place in blue green red. So, so far I was talking about only passive remote sensing. I was talking to you about uh, when sunlight falls, what is absorbed and what is reflected. But you don't have to use only sunlight, you can use other forms of electromagnetic. One of the forms of electromagnetic is a microwave remote sensing. That on the satellite I have a microwave generator. And I send microwave from the satellite, which falls on the object, whatever is reflected in the microwave frequency is analyzed. They are reasonably good for lasers and something like this. In fact, you must have read last month or two months ago, I think in the month of April, India had launched its own radar satellite. Otherwise, we did not have a radar imaging satellite so far. The radar imaging satellite has got two advantages. One advantage it operates in microwave radiation, so I get more objects like glaciers and all. Second, it can penetrate the cloud. Sunlight cannot penetrate the cloud. So if the place is very cloudy, I cannot really take an image of the space till the cloud go away. And there are areas of India which could be cloudy for many days. Whereas radar can penetrate the cloud. So that is an advantage of using radar. But radar means more energy I spend from the satellite. I have to send radar signals. And there is also airborne radar. Instead of a satellite, I can fix a radar equipment on an aircraft and go and uh, film that and create my image. This is what I talked to you about active sensor where the sun, passive sensor where the sun is illuminating and taking the picture, and active sensor where my satellite itself is sending some radiation and I am taking the picture. So I have talked about all these sensors, reflector, depth energy, passive. Another one which we, people do is to get also to reflect some energy. But you have to reflect. 
have scanned in a very infrared, low end infrared radiation. That is the heat absorbed by the air is released back to the atmosphere as infrared radiation. So I can also sense that. In fact, there is a beautiful picture of the earth at night, which is basically based on the Singapore and other countries. Heat islands can be a mark, saying that there is the heat emitted most. Singapore is one place that a lot of heat is emitted back to the atmosphere. That is a very hot place because so much energy has been absorbed by air. People use that for ecological studies to say that how, how the urban civilization has put in energy so much waste. So whenever we use an energy, we use very little of the energy. If you take this light, let's say this light is 500 watts. The illumination uses only about 10%, 50 watts. 450 watts is heat which is thrown into the atmosphere, absorbed in the earth, the bomb and all that. And that is reflected when at night. So if I take a picture of earth with a sensor that can only sense infrared radiation, I will know heat islands in the earth, how they are spreading and things like that. So that is what I say, earth energy which is coming back, I can put a passive sensor and do. And then I have another active sensor where radiation is sent from the factory or the aircraft. So these are some of the way I can, I can have a low energy aircraft and take uh, images, higher energy aircraft and sign, so the phase in which. So when I talk about satellite, there are two kinds of satellite objects. This is called geostationary. You must have heard, no? What is a geostationary object? Geostationary is an orbit, which means that satellite will be relative to the world yet in the same position all the time. That means, if I say that the satellite is right above Bangalore, all the time it will be above Bangalore. That is because the speed of the satellite and its orbit is synchronized with the speed of the earth and its revolution. Normally, the satellite would have 6,000 kilometers. Because only at that height, I can synchronize the speed of the earth and the speed of the satellite and then so forth. And it is very important for, can you guess why we need geostationary satellites? Huh? Wireless network. Wireless communication. Then, somebody else said something? Earth mapping. Earth mapping. Why do we need, I don't need a geostationary for earth mapping. I can map earth while flying from one position to another position. So I need geostationary satellite if I want to send some signals to the same place all the time. So it is required for my TV broadcasting. The first thing was TV broadcasting. TV broadcasting I need to send if I make a program in Canada I want to say I want to ensure that India gets all the signal at all time. There is no point in putting it to a satellite which passes over only one hour over Bangalore and then you miss the satellite. So I need for TV broadcasting. I need it for my telephones. The telephones also when I use a satellite for telephone, I want the signals to go to the same place. I want, it is called line of sight. I want my ground receiving station to be in the line of sight of the satellite. So for telecommunication and for TV broadcasting, I need geostationary satellite. Our whole insert range of satellites are geostationary satellites. And almost every two years we are putting up one inside satellite. On the other hand, we can have some synchronous orbit. Not yet synchronous. I am not uh, what I am doing is, I am not making the speed of the satellite to be same as the speed of the Earth, apparent speed, not actual speed. So that the satellite is in constant visibility to the same place on the Earth. On the other hand, I can make the satellite speed in such a way that the satellite has a constant visibility of the Sun. Which means that satellite will tell wherever the satellite is there, it will always be day. 
That means it will start, the satire will move in such a way, it starts in Japan, then comes to Thailand, then India, then satire will also move along with the sun. So, it, so the satellite does not have light. What is the advantage of it? If I have a camera which depends on the sun's ray, I can continuously take picture 24 by 7. I'll take a picture of Japan now, I may take a picture of Thailand, I may take a picture of India, I may take a picture of something else at various times. But I will still take a picture all the time. So I can maximize the use of my camera if I is in sun synchronous orbit. So that is why remote sensing satellites are normally in sun synchronous orbit with the polar orbits with 700 to 900 kilometers. This is the height at which the orbit is fixed. This is what I was talking about that. So this is the how the satellite caps. So I said no, each pixel has to be captured. So what happens is one kind of a, now we don't use the word camera and film and all that, we use the word scanner. It's exactly the same, not like a camera only you also have an optics. What it does is that for each the ground cell here, an array is mounted here. An array will have the length. The array will then picture this entire length from here to here. And this area from here to here is called a spark. And what happens, the orbit, the satellite will move like this, so I get line 1, line 2, line 3, line n. I keep adding this. And depending upon the orbital parameter, the same swap might come after some days. And how much swap it can measure depends upon the altitude and the camera properties. What, I, what can also happen here, you must remember, if my orbit is slightly away, let's say here, Still, I will capture some pixels of the area spot. So, there is an overlap on succeeding orbits. The way satellite orbits are done, they are done with a fixed frequency. That is, for example, if I take IR as 1A, IR as 1A has 21 day frequency. What does it mean is that every 21 days it flies over the same swap. Like if it is above Bangalore on day 1, on day 22 it will be again above Bangalore. But, but between one spark to another spark, there will be a 66% overlap. That means day 1 also I will have Bangalore, day 2 I will have 66% of Bangalore, day 3 I may have 33% of Bangalore. So that's how it will do. This is one kind of uh, way of taking. Uh, and the uh, amount I can take is dependent upon the number of <laughs> pixels I have here. If I have more, I can take more. And that's what determines the resolution. The other one is, I do not have that. I have a kind of a mirror here. And the mirror will slowly rotate. And depending upon the mirror's rotation, I get a field of view. So if the mirror straight rotates, I get more field. And the line is scanned like this. This is again the spot. But instead of moving like this, I get first this cell is taken, then this cell, then this cell, then this cell, then this cell. But I just started to move like this, so next cell like this. This is called this group scan. There are advantages, disadvantages. This is difficult to construct because I have a quite accuracy of the rotating, that is moving parts, I have to maintain them remotely. But on the other hand, I don't have, have such a bulky large camera. I can, because I will, the same detector I keep recording the electronically the RGB values. And this mirror gives me an idea of trying to get a stereo mirror. You know what is a stereo mirror? Stereo, what is a stereo mirror? We are supposed to have stereo mirror as human beings, animals. Stereo vision is we are looking at the same object from two angles. If I am looking at you, this side is looking at this angle, this side is looking at this angle. If you look at the same object from two angles, you can create, visualize the third dimension. So 
So stereo imaging is a technique by which I have the same viewing of the same pixel from multiple angles so that I can get roughly a third three dimensional picture. And this moving mirror is very good for stereo imaging. So this gives you some history of when did it start, you know. 1945, I am not talking about something with this new technology, but pretty old technology. Here it was, their cameras were attached to sounding rockets, and as rockets went, they take pictures. In India, we started with Rogi sounding rockets in the 60s, Vikram Sarabhai started, we would put a camera. Here, before that, we had uh, cameras tied to balloons, hot air balloons, and they would keep taking pictures. So, the history of remote sensing is pretty old. But 1972 made the major breakthrough where the satellite started carrying electronic charge coupled device based scanning system for cameras. 1972, that is 40 years ago, was the very first satellite having this uh, capability called thematic mapper by NASA. I still remember Professor Srinivas, he was uh, from Mysore but was working in NASA. And he had sent to us some geological pictures of Mysore and other areas taken by this thematic mapper. Compared to today's satellite, it is quite uh, what I would say is equivalent to the current day speed of computer was the speed of computer in those times. But it was still remarkable of uh, that. Then Indian satellite thing started in 1980s, 1981 for the IRS and Mitaji. Now there are many satellites. This, this gives you what all kind of satellites we have launched, including that the radar satellite only two months ago. So now when we come to this number, what is this 360M? So when you talk about satellite and satellite image, then you also talk about something called resolution. What's a resolution? Resolution is something I Show you that each pixel is a pixel on the ground. I have not told you what is the dimension of the pixel. Resolution is nothing but dimension of the pixel. That basically means this satellite Indian remote sensing ocean monitor, ocean current monitor. It has a camera or the scanner where each pixel corresponds to 360 meters on the ground. What does it mean? What is the RGB value I will get if the pixel is 360 meters on the ground? If that 360 meters has a combination of objects, let's say there is some paddy, then there is a road, then there is a railway line, then there is a water canal, all this can happen in 360 meters. What it would do is it will average out all the values and then give me one. So it is not good for very fine analysis, but it is good for major analysis, like for example, cloud cover, water body, because water bodies are generally larger than 360 meters, ocean. So anything which is generally large, I can study with this satellite. But if I want to study minute by minute, I have to go to better and better. So you can see the Indian thing, you know, it is not very good to study I can't see any road or anything here. But I can see cloud patches. <coughs> and this color, you, know, you would see it as a red color. No? Most of you would see a red color. This is not the value of the RGB value of that place, which is stored. But what we do in processing is we convert a lot of RGB values because it's again average out into what we call as a false color. Actually, this image will be known as a false color composite. We take some range of RGB values and give it as a color so that it's easy for us to analyze it. Normally, red color is shown for vegetation. Though in actual practice, green is vegetation. But finding out texture in green is difficult than finding out texture in red. And red is also, you know, red can be also clearly seen by our human eye. That's why his top signal is red. Why is it 
stop signal is red, yellow bar red, stop signal as green and uh, go signal as red. Stop signal is red because you can see a red color much more clearly from a longer distance than green color. That's why stop color is red everywhere. So we want to see things clearly. See, initially there was no computerized way of analyzing this information. There was no digital image process. I'm talking about 60s and 70s where we'll make this photo prints from the satellite image and then people will keep it on the table and then analyze it. It is called visual analysis. When I want to do visual analysis, if something is red, I can analyze it much more closely. The texture will be known and things. So we said that since most of us were worried about vegetation in those days, we said red touch show vegetation in red. That's why you find these are all vegetation. Vegetation is in red, normally we show. That's why this image is called false color composite. This shows the Sudha Summit environment. And if you see the real picture, you see this. You can see it is a light blue in color. Can you see from last? Compared to this, do you see the difference in shade from here to here? You cannot see. But come closer later, maybe, and you can see. This is light blue and this is very dark. It is actually, if you switch off the light, maybe the color should be very. The reason is that this depends upon the salinity. This area is fed by Ganga fresh water. And this is the, so when the fresh water comes from Ganga, you can see now? So when the fresh water is fed from Ganga, it goes at the bloom of the here. So much of fresh water goes into the sea. And so the salinity here is lower, so the color is, the reflectance is also different. I can study the salinity. This area is the normal water salinity, but because Ganga is feeding, the, the salinity here has reduced. It has its own implication for fish growth and various things, but basically I can study salinity from here. See these dark patches, these are all water. This is again, as I said now, I can also merge from two different cameras. Because of two different different. This is vertical. And I have merged the images from the IRS, which is a better resolution. Uh, IRS is a 4 meter resolution camera. IRS 1D. And then I am also using this 3. So I merge those two and then I get this. This is, you know, you see this kind of greenish gray. They are all the buildings kind of stuff. And here is a very shallow. Water body which is almost dried up, that's why you get that gray color. And these are all vegetations together with the green. So what is remote sensing? Remote sensing is from some distance, depending upon the decibel level of contact. So in a sense that if we can limit, go through this small lens. Now I remember that the digital camera what is a pixel in the first place? It is picture has been divided into the If I want to get some information. National College building and take a picture, I get a slightly longer length of the road. And if I go kilometers away, I can see the whole of the country. Rotate. You are trying. You have got a vehicle? Sign. Sense. Signs on my face. So in remote sensing, I can do two kinds of remote sensing. One energy on sending any wavelength or any frequency and then I am going to say using that I am taking a picture. It is like a BBC used to broadcast a number of things starting from 12. At this end, the RS, you will see the lot of absorption in the atmosphere. Gradually like increase the device. But I need to know that which one I should play with this. That is what pan chromatographic camera. So I have similar for caramel, which is a kind of a 300 watts. The illumination uses only about 10 percent. I say earth energy which is coming back, I can put a passive sensor in all the time. So that means if I say that the sat earth mapping, why do we need? I don't need a geostationary whatever bandwidth and then you miss the satellite. I want my ground receiving station to be on the satellite. On the other hand, 
and how much swath you can measure depends on the very satellite orbits are done. This is one kind of a way of making your solar by started. We would put a camera here. What's the resolution? Resolution is something that basically means this line, then there is a water canal all larger than 360 meters. Portion seen by a human eye. That's why it stops signaling about 60s and 70s. Where we will make this photo print from the comes from Ganga. You can see now? So yes. fresh water is so much of fresh water that goes into the sea. It has its own implication for fish growth and various things, but that just is around water. Again, as I said now, it can also merge from two different channels. And I have 